That's another one. Let's get into part two. Amber. In a lot of ways, Amber is Debbie Jr. She loves a man who has extraordinary powers. She has the patience to endure the hiccups of being in love with a hero who is called upon night and day. However, where Amber differs from Debbie is that she has dreams of her own that supersede her love for Mark. She wants to be part of the change to her local government. Amber also wants to be on the executive team at her university's student government. All of these dreams came dangerously close to ending when Anissa placed her cold, brutal hands around her neck. It was at this moment, Amber thought, I can't die here. I have so much I want to do. Debbie, for the most part, has only now come to grips with the danger of being a superhero spouse. She has lived, enjoyed, and endured the experience of being a spouse to a hero. But this is not, the, this is not Amber's destiny. And as much as she cares for Mark, she does not want to be put on hold or used as a pawn to hurt Mark. She wants to live her life, her way, on her terms. Throughout season two, you can see Amber wanting to renew her relationship with Mark. Amber has consistently supported Mark and has been a champ throughout several makeup dates. The purpose of Amber's pain is to let go of Mark. She has wants and needs that cannot be put on hold. And her life and her goals are stronger than her love and devotion to Mark. The Immortal A being who has lived for thousands of years, who has died thousands more. She's experienced life and death and become something more with each resurrection. He has faced Omni-Man and lost every single time. What must it feel like to have the strength and powers of a god and still lose time and again? What does it feel like to save someone only to die and be brought back to life? To see the ages pass by in a flash while those around you perish? No other person can say they have experienced life and death like Immortal except one, Duplicate. Duplicate is one such being who has lost her life over 90 times. The purpose of Immortal's pain is to live and meet and love Duplicate. Duplicate and the Immortal are two beings who understand each other, who have both experienced the loneliness of being immortal and the horror of facing death countless times over. Rex Blood. Throughout the series, you see Rex being pushed to be better, if ever so subtly. First, Adam Eve dumps him and leaves the gardens when she catches Rex cheating on her with Duplicate. Then Rudy uses Rex's DNA to make a new body of himself, which pisses off Rex. Then new members join the guardians who don't tolerate Rex's shit and push him further to stand out as a senior member. Then, Duplicate dumps him to shack up with the Immortal. All these setbacks have caused Rex Splode to either stand still or rise to the occasion, and I was pleased to see him rise to the occasion. When the team needed to fight the Sequits, Rex checked his ego and visited his old flame, Eve, to get her support for the team. Eve explained in Season 2 that Rex never had a family or home of his own. Acting out and pushing others' buttons is how Rex bonds with people. However, nothing challenged Rex more than when he faced King Lizard and the Lizard team. King Lizard is in many ways like Rex, an impatient, talkative sociopath. But when the danger backed Rex into a corner and his teammates began to fall all around him, Rex rose above it all. From being sliced in the stomach and back, to having his hand bit off, to even coming back to life from being shot in the fucking head. Rex beat the shit out of King Lizard with his bone protruding arm because of rage. That, that, that's some battle shit. Rex wanted King Lizard to shut the hell up, and he wanted him to pay for what he had done to his teammates. The purpose of Rex's pain was to grow up, to rise and become the leader and hero he was meant to be, even if it was for a short time. 
Ani Man. Nolan, aka Ani Man, is a character loved for his brutality, his commanding presence, is what everyone admires and fears, even his Viltrumite brethren. He is a legend to many of them. When Nolan came to Earth, he had one mission to prepare it for the arrival of the Viltrumite Empire. However, he didn't accomplish this. He became a hero and infiltrated the hollow corners of world governments. He then became a husband and father. And as time passed by, that original mission kept gnawing at him. When Nolan killed the original Guardians, this was the inciting incident for the entire series. Nolan was living in conflict the entire time he was on Earth. On one hand, the loving husband, father, and hero. And on the other, a conqueror, a soldier and a monster. The Chicago incident was a tipping point not only for Mark, but for Nolan as well. He believed, if I could get my son to help me keep Earth under heel, then maybe I could still be a true Viltrumite. However, the love he had with Debbie and being a father to Mark could not let him break Mark down the way he wanted. After he told Mark the truth about his heritage and his lifespan, that Mark would live beyond the breaking of the world, and there would be no one left to care for. Mark was, Mark's reply that he would still have his dad broke Nolan to the core. From that point on, Nolan was only a Viltrumite in name only. After the events of season one, Nolan became an emperor of Thraxis and had a son with Andresa, a Thraxan royal. Because of the lifespan of Thraxans only lasting one human year, this caused Nolan to cherish every emotion even more so than he had in the past. The fleeting moments of the, of the Thraxan race evolved Nolan to discover true empathy and become the hero he was meant to be. The purpose of Nolan's pain is to protect the weak from the strong and to fight for those he loves. What kept Nolan from hurling himself into a singularity was the act of saving and defending the weak. This gave him hope. And his final words in season two proves his love for Debbie, Debbie still holds strong. While in a Viltrumite prison ship awaiting execution, Nolan says, I think I miss my wife. Mark Grayson, a.k.a. Invincible. The show is called Invincible, but Mark is anything but invincible. With each battle, Mark gets his ass kicked. I think this is the greatness of the show and the Invincible character. In some ways, Mark is learning with each battle. However, with each battle, the cause has grown greater and taken a toll on those he loves. For much of season one, Mark was someone coming to grips with having the powers and being the son of the great Omni-Man. However, as he learned to control his powers, he became cocky and neglected the safety of those around him. The Chicago incident was as much a rite of passage for Mark as it was a traumatic experience. The love he had for his father saved the world, but it shielded him from the harsh truth. Mark needs to do and be better. Angstrom Levy was the first to witness the brutality of Mark through countless dimensions. Angstrom was Mark's true rite of passage because Mark had to decide whether to save Angstrom or his family. Mark, for the most part, has been very lucky in his battles often winning by the skin of his teeth, or because someone stepped in. The fight with Angstrom pushed him past his limits physically and mentally. On Thraxis, Nolan told Mark, I need you to hold, not hold back. You need to take this fight seriously, or we are all dead. Mark heard his father, but it did not truly set in. When Anissa threatened his girlfriend in front of him, Mark heard Anissa's words, stood his ground, and defended Earth. But this was a lucky break. Anissa could have destroyed Mark, but Mark knew he was important to the cause, and that she would not kill him. This was a risky move on Mark's part that eventually paid off. However, when Angstrom broke Debbie's arm and beat her up, Mark went into a rage because he was not there to protect her from being harmed. He was floating through dimensions, holding back, chatting with inhabitants of other worlds. And when Mark saw his mother's condition, 
This activated his rage, a rage Nolan needed from Mark on Thraxus, and a rage Mark needed to show when fighting Anissa. Mark is a slow learner. He even owned up to as much when fighting Anissa and said he was never a great student. Mark needs to be pushed. He needs to be prodded into being better. However, with each new battle, the time frame of him learning that fact has grown shorter and shorter. Throughout season two, Mark always said, I'm not my father. No, Mark, you are not Nolan. You must become better than Nolan ever could be if Earth or your family is to have a chance. The purpose of Mark's pain is to be better. College and having a girlfriend is secondary to the objective of becoming stronger and a better hero. Like Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. Mark finally understood that at the end of season two. There are so many great things I loved about season two. I want to discuss, but examining the purpose of pain and how it relates to driving the characters forward to be better was something that greatly interested me. Invincible is one of my favorite shows ever, and I plan on reading the graphic novels to gain a better understanding of the rich characters and stories Kirkman created. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you stayed to the end, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all for helping me get to 50 subscribers. Let's continue to grow together. Fabs out. Thank you.